Eric Burgess here, and we have been asked to find the probability that z is greater than 2 and z is less than 2.2. Like in all the previous problems, this is sort of the last case that we need to talk about. And we are again going to just draw our normal curve, like so. And then we want z being bigger than, this. the alligator would rather eat the z. So z greater than 2, we know that since these are z scores, this is a standard normal distribution. The mean is in the middle, and that is 0. And we would have 2 somewhere over here. And we want z greater than 2. So we want all the stuff bigger than it, and strictly bigger than it. Now, over here we want z, but this time it's less than. The, the alligator would rather eat the negative 2.2. And so we want z less than 2.2. So negative 2.2 is going to be somewhere over here, negative 2.2. We're just going to drop a line down here. And we want all the stuff that's less than this value. So numbers that are smaller than it go this way. So that means the area, meaning the space between the line and the curve, is right here. And so we want to know how much these things are together because we have the word and here. So we say, okay, we want, we want all the red area. So we have two cases. We have area to the left, which we know the chart will return area to the left, easy peasy. And we have an area to the right, and we know that to get the area to the right, we have to do one minus the area to the left, which we explained in a previous video. Uh, actually, the first one where we do this kind of a problem. And so if that formula is unclear to you, go ahead and go check that video out. So let's go ahead and do this thing. Now we're going to do it using the calculator, Excel, and the chart as is normal for us to do. So first let's find this area since area to the left is easy. So to find this we just say okay, well this area on the chart we just need to look up a z of negative 2.2. So we go to our chart and then we go to the negative side and we want negative 2.2. Negative 2.2 is right here. So there's negative 2.2. And since there's nothing after it, it's 2.20. So the last digit would be zero. So that's showing up here. And then we would simply find where they cross. So negative 2.2 crosses at point zero one three nine zero. So let's go ahead and write that down. This, this gives an area of 0 0.01390. And if we were to write this out, this is actually equal to the probability that z is less than negative 2.2. So this is the area in red here. That's the red stuff. So we say, okay, great. Now let's go ahead and do the area to the other side. And for this one, we're going to need to do 1 minus the area to the left. This is going to give us the area to the right. Right? And just as I guess a quick recap, that's because that's all this area, right? That's what the chart would give us. And we know that the whole thing, the entire thing is 1. So if we want just this piece left, we should take the entire curve, 1, and subtract off the area to the left. And we will be left with just this bit remaining. And so, right, that's sort of the intuit, intuitive way of understanding this formula. So we say, okay, well, let's look this up. So we need to find a z that is equal to 2. And then we need to do 1 minus whatever that is. So we're going to go over to our standard normal. Let's go ahead and erase what we've done here. And we want positive z scores. So we go to the positive side. And we're going to go to 2. And so it's just regular old 2, so it would be 2.00. And that gives us this value right here, right? If we come down, this is what we would get. So we get 0.97725. So let's go ahead and take that. And we get 0.97725. And with this, we can compute this. I'm going to go ahead and use the calculator. We're going to do 1 minus 0.97725. And we get 0 0.02275. And this is our answer for the area to the right 
and this is our answer for the area to the left. And we want all of it together. So we're simply going to add 0 0.01390 and we're going to add that to 0 0.02275. This is going to give us a value. Let's go ahead and do this. So we're going to get 0 0.01390 plus 0 0.2275. Oops, did I forget a zero? You can go ahead and navigate back there. And if you want to insert a digit, you see it's in blue here, it says insert. So you can actually hit the blue key and then insert and this will let us put a zero in. So pretty handy function so you don't have to retype everything. Good one to know. And we're gonna go ahead and hit enter and this is the value that we get. We get 0.03665 and this is our answer. So this is our final answer. So I'm gonna go ahead and unbox these and box our, our final answer which is over here. And if we were to write this out in probability, we would just write the probability that Z is greater than two and Z is less than negative 2.2. We could do this using um, unions and intersections and things, but in most of these classes, I don't think it's going to matter that we get that like technical. So you could write it out like this and that's just a, a nice way of saying this is what the probability that Z fulfills these conditions is this. All right, so let's go ahead now and move into the second way. So the second way is we could just use the calculator. Now with the calculator, it's a bit different. So the calculator is great for in between, but when it comes to areas on the edge, we can't find, we can't just use one as a lower bound and one as an upper bound like we did in previous problems because that would be like finding the area in between. Instead, we need to treat these two things as two separate regions. So over here, right, we have negative infinity and over here we have positive infinity. So our first lower bound would be here because that's the lowest one and then our upper bound would be right here. And then we start again. So the lower bound on this side is right here. It's where our lowest value is and then our upper bound is over here. So to do it with the calculator, we're going to have to do this in two, two swings. So we're going to go to our distribution menu, right? Because we're dealing with a standard normal distribution. So you hit the blue key to get to the blue distribution menu. Then we're going to go to cumulative, right? Normal CDF because we want the area. We don't want like individual values. So we hit two. And then for our first lower bound, remember the way we write infinity on the calculator, negative infinity, is we just write a really big negative number. So we put negative one and then we want the E and that's in blue here. So we hit the blue keys and then the E and then 99. So this is like negative one with 99 zeros. That's how we write massive numbers very efficiently. And then our upper bound is negative 2.2. Don't forget to use the correct negative sign. So negative 2.2. And now we know that it's a standard normal distribution and we sort of talked about this quite a bit in the previous video. So we're just going to take it for granted that the standard normal distribution has a mean of zero and a standard deviation of one. And so we're just going to go ahead and hit paste and enter. And this is the value we get. And notice that it is, is pretty much exactly this value. In fact, they even the rounding is the same and everything. So it's really, really great. So we would get this and that would be the area on this side. Now let's do the area on the top side. So we're going to go again to second distribution and we're going to go normal CDF or you can just hit two. And for the lower bound this time, we want two. So we hit two. And for the upper bound, it's positive infinity. So we do positive one and then we want the E. So we hit second and then the E key and then 99. Again, zero one and we hit enter and we get point zero point my bad, 0 0.02275. And if we look at that, that is exactly what we got here. And when we add them together, we get this. Now, if you're using a chart that only has four values, it's gonna round. So yours will probably say 0 0.0228. Uh, that's totally fine. It's gonna be a very, very close number. And so we see that when we add them together, we'll actually get the same, the same answer because we got the same numbers here. So let's, uh, let's finish this off by uh, knocking this out in Excel, shall we? So go ahead, pull up Excel. 
And we're just going to start a blank workbook. And let's just type this in real quick. So we have first, let's get, uh, let's label these. Let's uh, area to the left, area to left. And I'm just going to widen this, this one out. And this one's going to be equal to, and then we're going to get, uh, we want equals to let it know that we're doing a formula. And then we want norm dot dist for normal distribution. And this is going to give us the area to the left. So we don't need to do any one minus stuff because we're doing the first side, right? And so our x value is going to be negative 2.2. Remember, because our mean is zero and our standard deviation is one, that two point negative 2.2, that x here is really a z-score. And then we do want cumulative, right? Because we want the area. So we go ahead and hit one and then we hit enter. And we get the same number, in fact, a very accurate number. So that's really great. Now we want area to right. And for this one, we want to find the area to the right. So we're going to type equals. And then remember, the area to the right, we have to do one minus because this normal dist, the normal distribution function will give us the area to the left. So we do one minus normal dot dist for the normal distribution. This is like kind of looking it up in the chart, how you do it in Excel. And then we have X, our X in this case is two. Our mean is zero, our standard deviation is one, and we do want cumulative. And one means true, meaning yes for cumulative. We hit enter and we get our two numbers. Now, if we want to add them in Excel, we can do uh, really great things when it comes to like working with lots of numbers that are extremely precise. So we could say for this one, we will put um, added area. That'll be our column for this one. And for this one, we want to put equals and we can just click on the column, the first, the first result. We want to say we want this, this number that's here and we want to add to it. So we put a plus sign, this number that's here. Okay. And then you just go ahead and hit enter and you will get the summation, which is 0 0.03665. And if we go over to what we got, we had the same 0 0.03665. So we could see that is how you would do it with each of the methods. If you have any questions about this, let me know, subscribe, and we'll see you in the next problem.